Good morning, everyone. And uh, this session is really great uh, because we often say like improvisation is associated with music, uh, for example, jazz. And most of the studies on improvisation um, is about music uh, because you can learn so much. Not only about music, but also the transfer from music to organization. Uh, and today we um, have three people um, who uh, will answer some of the question. Uh, Christoph Zürn, Wolfgang Stark and Lutz Hempel. Could you introduce yourself? Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Lucas. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and to be with you as a group. And I already realized that you had a very inspiring week already. Uh, and we hope we will equally inspired. My name is Wolfgang, Wolfgang Stark. I'm a, a teaching at a university and researching as a, at, at a university in Germany. Uh, at two universities, actually, one uh, is Duisburg Essen, the other one is the Straschek Center for Entrepreneurship in, Germ in, in Munich. And um, what I'm uh, doing, or what, what I'm trying to do, is to find out about the tacit knowledge in organizations. Um, so, what is the hidden experiential knowledge behind? plans behind uh, structures and these kind of things. Because uh, what we found out is that in organizations, this is the most imp uh, important thing uh, when, you, when it comes to the question, how do organizations function? So it's all about experience. It's all about what people call implicit or tacit knowledge. Maybe one word about implicit and tacit. Implicit is uh, the experiential knowledge you have as an individual, the tacit knowledge is in a way the collective knowledge of an organization and that's maybe important. And the reason why we uh, started to uh, work with improvisation is because we try to find a new channel how to uh, grasp this tacit knowledge. So how do we know uh, when an organization is working good, has good, uh, uh, good results beyond the, uh, key, uh, the, the, the numbers. And uh, we started to think about uh, if we could uh, 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 grasp the sound of an organization, uh, we would be able to, to hear what an organization is, 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 is uh, sounding like. And that's why we started to work with uh, some jazz musicians. And, uh, uh, and then we slowly uh, stepped into improvisation, which we will talk about uh, a little bit later. But I'm really happy that I'm together with today with uh, Christoph and Lutz who are musicians and, and at the same time are uh, working as organizational consultants. So they represent both sides. I'm the only, I'm, I'm the consultant and the researcher. I'm not a musician, only amateur. Uh, but uh, Christoph and Lutz are the both who are uh, representing both sides of the, of the coin. Hello, everybody. Um, good morning. Um, Making organizations sound is actually what uh, we do with Groove and Organization. So I am, yes, I'm a management consultant, have been for 20 years. And a um, couple of years ago, I brought together um, basically my, my musical background and improvisation background um, for organizations and with management. So that's when I found a Groove and Organization. And we found a way to, as a part of team development, to really make a culture of a team um, sound with um, top musicians. It's a process with storytelling where like the essence, the, the feeling about the, the organization, how do we feel, how do we want to feel as a team when we are uh, at our best? How does that sound? And we um, developed this process um, through storytelling, uh, which then um, 
the musicians we um, put into a sound uh, more like a song because it there has to be a time structure it cannot just be a sound like bah. um so a song and then there are feedback loops and people like teams afterwards um jam it with us so they make their own music and it is really an amazing um, experience and and of course there's transfer there is relating this to the organization like what does this mean now what's in the way if we want to have a culture like this and all that um so um that is part of grooving organization and um i'm also into um into mindfulness and and, and resonance um um and resonance uh, it, again in grooving organization is important um as a um, as a concept um so we have sound we have groove and we have um, resonance actually as as the the meta concept um in our work and um yeah, and mindfulness is is kind of like um, at the bottom, um, and that's why uh, all this together um, is um, we use for um, work with teams and leaders in agility contexts. And you know this um, buzzword, and we call it natural agility. So we want we come with all these um, methods from improvisation from um, embodiment a um, little bit design thinking you know like creative methods um, and we we work with people to basically find their way back to naturally being creative innovative um, co-creating collaborative and that's what we call natural agility and here i pause and hand over to christoph thank you lutz hello everybody my name is christoph Zürn. Um, I'm a creative companion. That's the name of my company. And I accompany people in creative processes or, yeah, uh, or, or, or creative people. I was creative director. I'm a service designer. I'm a management consultant. So at the very end, I try to bring everything together to work in companies. Most of the time, I'm not playing music like uh, Lutz uh, or, or, or Wolfgang for an, for an interaction, um, uh, I, have, um, I came up with a framework and I call it music thinking, music thinking framework. And I have six cues. And um, I realized that in, in all my experience that companies um, have different entry points in when they want to change. One would be jamming, like need more creativity in the company. Another one would be empathy. We have to understand our clients and often also our colleagues and our uh, uh, employees better. Another one is uh, personality. Who are you? So if you know who you are, then you also can see what you can be for other people. An important one is score. And score for me is like, like a musical score. But what does it mean in a, in a, in a, in a, in a business context? And there um, I have two, two, two sides. One is to show what we want to do. That's an abstract uh, thing, like a vision. And another thing is a to do, like a, a score, like a classical score, where exactly everything is written down and you have to, to interpret and to play it. And then we have agility, which means, okay, if we know everything, how can we bring it into life? And the last one is remix. So we are, at the very end, you have to, to ship, you have to bring together, no questions asked, you're performing, and th this is how you go. And the, the most important thing is, this is just one run through the framework, because then you start again with listening and with empathy and jamming. So that's, that's my way of working. And I bring this in the companies. Um, and the thing that I like most is we are very good prepared. We have also a good plan. And I love it if things change, because then there the magic uh, uh, comes. It's also like with COVID. In some way, it's very hard. And in the other way, it's really cool because people now act totally differently. And that's like in music, why I love um, uh, improvisation. I'm playing more than 35 years with, the, with 10 saxophones together, free improvisation. So this is for me the normal to come up with something and play also in other bands, but that's my background. But in, in the, in, and I bring this into, into the companies. Thank you very much for uh, this first show of you uh, combining uh, music, improvised music, uh, with uh, the organization. For most people, they, uh, they do not know how to you know, combine that. Um, could you 
um, explain perhaps um, with a, a story or an example how you can um, transfer the, 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 the knowledge or the experience in, of improvised music uh, to an organization. So is it about uh, leadership? Is it about the rhythm? Is it about, as you mentioned, the sound of uh, the organization? As Christoph mentioned, um, it is very important to have and work with people on those principles that are underlying this uh, improvisational work. And in the session later, we are going to explore that with you. Um, so what is it actually? Because, because the, in, at the principle level, like behaviors uh, and, and principles, uh, things can be transferred. Yeah? Uh, an example, um, absolute key in improvisation is there is a situation that is new. And I'm talking about really open improvisation. I'm not talking about the kind of improvisation where pretty much 90% of the music, let's say, is written down and then there's a little space for some, you know, soloing. Um, I'm talking about like the real stuff. And so it's new every time. And especially if there's n n new musicians uh, d gathering and, and going for it. So stepping into this unknown space, like making this first move, um, like designers fear of the white, uh, the blank page, you know, get it starting trusting your skills and the skills of the team. Um, so this is just one principle and it can be demonstrated and people in like suitable interaction can feel it themselves. And then when you talk about it and transfer it to the reality of a team or of a, of, of, of a leader, then they know what this is about. They feel it and then they can make, make sense of it in their business in, uh, context. And so this level of um, principles of um, maybe even patterns, organizational patterns, is a, a specialty of, of Wolfgang in his, in his research. Um, that, that is a level um, where you can talk and where people like develop the understanding. And uh, maybe I um, uh, add to, to the pattern notion. So uh, we did a uh, a uh, couple of years, uh, some research together with a jazz band, uh, jazz combo uh, on organizational uh, improvisation. And uh, well, in the, in the first, uh, uh, the first idea was how can we grab, like I said before, how can we grasp the sound of the organization? And then we found out, well, the sound is not just one thing, like Lutz uh, just mentioned. It's uh, a very uh, a complicated and very delicate uh, web of different patterns. And we ident uh, then we identified or we, we detected that uh, uh, jazz music is based on patterns as well. It's based on little microstructures. And that's basically what, what you have in organizations as well. And you uh, and improvising in organizations means you use your experiential knowledge, your implicit knowledge uh, put into patterns and redesign these different parts which you already have there and uh, try to uh, link the different knowledge parts, the different patterns and design something new. That's what people uh, nowadays call agility or try to call agility, it's not that easy. So agility is not, is, is like Lutz said, is, it's a, a very uh, well-used buzzword, which uh, most of the time when you look into so-called agile organizations, they are not agile at all. They, they are not really improvising. But what you, nowadays what you need because of the a higher complexity of organizations is to learn how to improvise, is to learn how to deal with the unknown, to step in the white page or in the open room and open space. And that's what we are trying to rehearse and trying to do with organizations. May I add one thing to, to what Wolfgang Lutz said? Um, I'm using um, music uh, as an analogy. Uh, if I work with the with the management team, um, and let's say there are four people, the question is from hey, how are musicians working together? 
there. Four is interesting, that's a quartet. And the interesting, oh, but it's not only the number four. The question is, are you um, operating as a classical quartet? You're playing music from someone who has written down everything exactly and is maybe dead since 300 years? Or are you like the Fab Four, where two people are doing the job and the others are helping them and that's okay for everyone? Or are you a jazz band where the one whose name is on, on, the, on the cover uh, as the biggest name, um, does he always play or is it just the way you give direction? So, it's, so this is an analogy I'm using uh, a lot. And also, what are your duos? Write down with whom you're playing duo in your organization. What are strong duos? What are duos that have a problem? And how these duos, again, have quartets, quintets, and so on. I think you get the idea. And it helps to, to, to open people's, people's mind that say, wow, I never thought about this. And so you can learn by listening to music or to constellations how people interact for something that you could use in your company. Say, hey, well, wow, maybe we are just a classical quartet and we are just don't have a score. Now, I will I connect on that because some... Uh, managers, if they use an analogy, they see themselves more uh, as a conductor in front of an orchestra and, and you know, they perform and they lead uh, and, and they more or less also rule together with uh, the musicians. And now you are more focusing on, on a, a jazz band uh, in which there's not the one leader, there's more a quartet uh, or an ensemble. So uh, what is the difference also in the context of organizations? Uh, do you think that organizations um, could think more in a jazz way or more in an orchestra way? I, I think both is possible, but um, glad that you mentioned that. That's something that a lot of people ask me from, hey, uh, Christoph, can you help me? We, what we just need, everything is okay. We know everything, everything is going fine, but we just need a good conductor. And then you, you, you talk with people and you come back and say, this would be a waste of time because your people are organized like a jazz band. Everything is doing something else. And some of them work together and some not. So the question is first understand how you work and then try to find what you do with it. And if they are good in improvisation, but they want to be better, that's very good. If, they're, if it's a very big organiz uh, organization, a hierarchy, uh, uh, for a very strong uh, hierarchy, um, it's very hard and the top always wants that everybody is flexible instead of the top. So the question would be, if you want to use this as a principle, let's get trained first and let's really see what you want to do with it. And it's not about jazz or, or that's the good thing, uh, thing with music. Music is not good or bad, it's just different. So everything is possible. And that's the good thing, what's uh, applicable for your company. It might be improvisation, but it also be my, uh, like in the 60s, where you have uh, compositions that give you a lot of space, a lot of ways of, of uh, connecting things. So it's just a long answer to a short question. But the, the conductor, that, that's a very, um, yeah, it sometimes it's, it starts like a joke because you heard it so much. And most of the time, it's not the solution. Yeah, that's... That's right. When we started our research about improvisation, about music in organizations, we uh, went to the Berlin Philharmonics and asked them, well, uh, how do you think about the music of uh, companies or the music of organizations? And one thing was uh, we were talking with, a, with a, uh, the, the first violinist and the cellist, and they said, well, you know, the conductor is not important. So we, we've seen a lot of conductors as, Berlin, as musicians in the Berlin Philharmonics. It's, and if we, if we have a good conductor, they are really aware of the capabilities and competencies within the orchestra. And if, uh, so the conductor is not, is, is kind of trying to uh, get out the, the capabilities of the orchestras, of the different members or the, the employees, if you talk about a, a company. Uh, and that's maybe one of the, 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 uh, the, the a picture of or image of, of, of leadership in organizations. And that's the important thing. So it's, it's not about uh, hierarchical versus uh, open, like an improvisation. It's 
both sides in each in each music. And if you go back to classical music, classical music always started with improvisation. And Johann Sebastian Bach is the best example. And each jazz player, each jazz musicians, musician is relying on Bach because he started the improvisation idea, but he couldn't record it. That's why he was writing it down. And now we are playing the written down music, the compositions, so-called compositions. But all compositions are starting with impro. So there's just a little something I would like to add to that. This picture of conductor, um, I think um, it's too simple. Uh, there, are, there are very different kinds of orchestras and of conductors. And um, there are even orchestras or ensembles without any conductor, uh, even in classical music. Uh, a world famous one is for the Freiburg Baroque Orchestra. Uh, Baroque Orchestra. I mean, check them out. It's it's really amazing. Um, and um, and the same goes for jazz. Uh, I have difficulties with jazz because um, when I uh, talk to business people, often it happens like they hear jazz and get narrow because for some jazz is like some swing standard, for others it's like uh, boogie woogie, for others it's, it's blues, whatever. Um, but nowadays jazz is very broad. You know, musicians come, um, they, they travel, they, it's really a mix of so many different, there's pop in it, there's funk, there's it's all rock even. So um, the term jazz, uh, I like to call it, um, if I talk about jazz, like, Okay, think of it as nowadays like contemporary um, crossover music, or I don't even call it jazz, I call it like improvised music. <laughs> Thank you.